Hey guys, Adam Young from Sentinel 3D Scanning here. And in this video, we're going to continue our two-part video about what equipment to put in your metrology lab. Last month, we discussed large equipment, acquisition and analysis software, workbenches, and fixturing. So if you missed that video, I would highly recommend going back and watching it before watching this one. In this month's video, we will pick up where we left off and we will be discussing several additional items you should consider when purchasing equipment for your metrology lab. But before I get into this video, just a quick disclaimer, because I don't know exactly what parts you will be inspecting, it would be foolish for me to tell you exactly what equipment to put in your metrology lab. So just remember to take what I say with a grain of salt. Now that equipment is picked out and some storage space exists, it's time to purchase or manufacture calibration and or verification standards. Most equipment will come with calibration standards that work well with the manufacturer's calibration program, but they might not do a good job of highlighting errors in your measurement system. If this is the case, you may need to order some additional standards. When ordering additional calibration or verification standards, try to match the standards geometry to the equipment you're using and also to the types of parts you are measuring. For instance, if you're going to be measuring a lot of internal diameters, maybe make your own calibration standard with several internal diameters. Or, if you're measuring with a CMM, consider ordering some ball bars to be used for B89 testing. Regardless of the type of standards you order, make sure to have them calibrated and to keep calibrating them on a routine basis. In addition to purchasing calibration standards for your large equipment, I would also recommend ordering some more general standards for more generic equipment. Things like gauge blocks, pin gauges, and setting rings. With generic calibration standards taken care of, it's now time to get some generic hand tools as well. Some of the more common ones include calipers, micrometers, depth gauges, dial indicators with stands, height gauges, test indicators, and feeler gauges. When purchasing hand tools, I would recommend purchasing the bare essentials to start, and then purchasing additional gauges as they are needed. I've worked in labs where many of the hand tools have gone unused, and lead times are typically pretty short for hand tools when one is actually needed. Another tool you should consider is a surface plate. While it's not a hand tool per se, it does pair well with some of the aforementioned tools, like height gauges and test indicators. These extremely flat surfaces work great anytime a datum plane simulator is required, or in the event that a part needs to be constrained to something flat. When ordering, make sure to choose the grade of surface plate required for the tolerances your lab inspects. And don't forget, you will probably need some way of lifting this massive piece of granite onto its stand once it arrives. Data storage is an extremely important consideration for any lab. Sure, it might be easy to store all of your data on individual computers and then transfer the data elsewhere via a thumb drive, but what if the hard drive dies or the thumb drive gets lost? Instead, I would recommend setting up some sort of centralized storage system with a backup plan. Then, find a secure way to connect all of the computers in the lab to this centralized system. This will allow CAD, inspection projects, and data to be accessed from any PC, and for data to be saved from any PC. To make this idea a reality, talk to your IT folks or look into setting up your own NAS system. This said, keep in mind that metrology software isn't always super stable. If you go connecting all of your PCs to the outside world via internet, and are constantly downloading the latest updates and using your own antivirus software, you may experience some issues. So beforehand, make sure to speak with your software's application engineers first to see if they have any antivirus software concerns and to see if they have any concerns with the software running on the latest operating system. Let's say you just set up your lab and you have about 50 gauges in total. How are you going to keep track of them all? Gauge management software is software that helps you manage all of your gauges. It's basically a database that contains information about the past, present, and future of your gauges. 
Some features of these types of applications include checking gauges in and out, calibration status, preventative maintenance, gauge r, &R studies, repairs, uncertainty studies, and labeling. Now, you could do most of these tasks in other software like Excel, but purchasing a software to do most of the heavy lifting for you will make your life a lot easier. Just be aware that if you are a busy lab or just starting out, keeping the software updated may fall by the wayside. So only invest in the software if you are actually committed to using it. Maybe use a cheaper tool like Excel until you are certain that you will actually get value from gauge management software. Remember how much we talked about environmental controls in our video about metrology lab environments? No? That's okay because we're going to talk about it some more. Hopefully by now you have a nice HVAC system with stable temperatures, but now you will need methods of monitoring it. The simplest way to do this is to scatter a few calibrated thermometers throughout the lab. But there are fancier options. Back in the old days, labs used to buy analog data loggers that would record historical temperature data on sheets of paper. And although some labs do still use these types of data loggers, there are more modern options available. Data loggers nowadays allow you to save temperature data to removable storage and some will even store data in the cloud so that temperatures can be monitored from anywhere. If the temperature is inconsistent throughout your lab, try purchasing some fans to get the air flowing. And if you're like me and 68 degrees is way too cold for you, consider installing some coat racks near the entryway so that employees can don their winter parkas as they enter the lab. We've also discussed lab cleanliness in the past. There is nothing more frustrating than inspecting parts on an optical measuring machine or finishing up a 3D scan, only to find there's a tiny hair or dust particle throwing off your data. To ensure this doesn't happen to you, I would recommend keeping a variety of cleaning supplies in your lab. Things like disposable wipes, swabs, and solvents. Another thing I always keep on hand are clean microfiber cloths because they are great for cleaning parts and they don't leave behind any lint or dust particles, like some wipes do. Another great tool for cleaning parts is compressed air, which can be used to give parts a quick spray right before inspection to remove any loose particles and to evaporate cleaning solvents more quickly. Some folks like to use those cans of compressed air for cleaning electronics, but I wouldn't recommend it because these will cool your parts down to a different temperature than your lab equipment. To keep the floors clean, always keep a dust mop on hand, and if you want to be extra clean, consider a sticky mat at the entryway. Last but not least, I would recommend purchasing some standards for your lab. Not calibration standards like we discussed before. Instead, I'm talking about written standards from organizations like ISO, ASME, and ANSI. The types of measurements you're making will dictate which standards you need to buy. If you're inspecting GD&T, consider purchasing ASME Y14.5 or ISO 1101. If you're inspecting roughness, consider purchasing ASME B46.1 or whatever the ISO equivalent is. If you don't know what standards to buy, check your drawings. Standards are typically referenced in the notes. So that wraps up my list of equipment to put in your metrology lab. There are a bunch more odds and ends that I could go on and on about, but I guess I will let you get back to doing something more useful. Is there anything I missed in either this video or the last? If so, let us know in the comments down below. And if you or anyone else you know needs 3D scanning services, either for inspection or reverse engineering applications, please check out Sentinel 3D Scanning at sentinel3dscanning.com. See you next time.